channel. Today I'm just going to give you a little update on my diagnosis process for my autism slash Asperger's assessment and then I'm just going to talk a little bit about how I went about it so it's basically just giving you guys advice and reassuring you if you're nervous or whatever. So basically I have talked about it before so I'm not going to go into depth but I went to my doctors and I actually had to chase them up eventually after a while after it went through the process and they said I'd be on about a three year waiting list but to let them know if my situation changed. So I'm going to college in September to do photography, film and media. So I decided to email them just to see if I could get an assessment earlier so I could maybe get some support in college if I ever needed it. And they said hopefully I'll be getting a an assessment in August time, July time before I start college. They said they're going to send me an appointment through the post. I haven't got it yet but I'm going to chase that up soon if it doesn't come. So now I'm just going to talk a little bit about how I went about my process of diagnosis. Obviously this is this will be different in different places, different in different countries. I'm from England so this is how I would go about it. I made a GP appointment, I booked one with a female, a female doctor I'd never seen before so she had no biases on me, she'd never met me before and I just feel comfortable more comfortable talking to females so she got this form for me because I'd already told them what I wanted to come in for and basically asked a lot of questions quite stereotypical quite like the boy based spectrum -y train obsession kind of questions but we filled it in she was a little bit skeptical because when I said special interest I was more going along the lines of yeah tv shows movies when I get one I like obsess and obsess and everything and she was like because mm, she was also like well that's not really a special interest. A special interest is like trains or nature or, and I was like okay well. <laughs> so yeah I filled that in and then eventually I got these forms through the post because they thought that I might need to fill them in because I may need an assessment. Filled them in. They had different questions relating to, there were some very strange questions like did you have to cut up, did you like to cut up worms when you were a child? I'm not really sure what that question was doing in there but yeah. Um, eye contact questions you know quite again quite obvious ones kind of thing and my dad filled in a bit which is for the parent to fill in and then we sent them off. I ended up having to email them to chase whether or not I was getting an assessment because in my brain I was like this is going to be like a normal doctor's appointment you know in a few months I'll get it. Three year waiting list they told me so obviously now I'm waiting for it and everything and I just wanted to kind of talk just a little bit do a little video just about my process of how I went through it and everything. Uh, if you're nervous I was nervous like it took me a long time to kind of build up courage because before this I didn't even realise that I could be autistic, my parents, nobody really believed me because it's such a new thing to me and to everybody else but obviously the more I de like delve into it the more I knew so I needed, I just needed to get that assessment, Like I need to get it, I just want to be able to self accept etc. So yeah, that's what I did. So I would recommend if you are going for an assessment, when you book an appointment with your GP, maybe just book it, say you're a female, um, you feel more comfortable talking to females, book it with somebody like that. I didn't want to book it with my normal GP because like I said, he's seen me quite a lot so he could easily be like my parents and be like, no, because that I've never shown maybe that, like, you know, I've masked, I've never shown obvious symptoms, traits, etc. So he could have easily shot me down and not listened, whereas that person I'd never met before was quite ready to listen, willing to listen, she was very nice about it all, kind of put me at ease. I also made a list of the things why, like the reasons why I thought I was autistic, think I'm autistic. I ended up not reading off the list because I kind of just got in the zone and was very anxious and everything, but I'd recommend you guys make a list. So i say my main three tips to help you get a diagnosis. One, I can't, I can't really stress this enough, but make it as soon as possible because obviously the waiting list is so long and you don't realise and it can be scary and obviously you can't just make the appointment say I could have made it five years ago because I had no idea like I could be autistic I didn't really know anything about autism in females so yeah that's just make it as soon as possible is kind of a tip but obviously you can't always do that but if you're thinking about it and you're thinking oh maybe I'll just do it next month you know there's plenty of time just try and get it done as soon as possible because it is such a long wait list in England anyway as far as I know it could be the same in America I'm not sure but let me know down in the comments how long the wait was for you or if you're waiting now. Two, ask for somebody you feel more comfortable speaking to like if say your normal doctor's a male like mine and you feel more comfortable speaking to females or the other way around request it, ask for it because you want to be comfortable in this situation, you don't want to be uncomfortable because you want to be able to talk freely if you can and give as much information and proof as possible so you can go on to the next step 
and again really talk through try and educate your parents your friends they're, they're probably not going to believe you at first because everyone to me was like what because i'd never said it before i'd never shown these things before like no one's ever realized when all that and no one really knows much about autism and females which is why obviously i'm making this kind of i'm making these videos documenting my journey and yeah maybe a couple more tips i would say make a list definitely make a list and last one do your research because then the more you research the more you can find out how you resonate with those things and then you've just got everything you've got the list and everything and you can prove it and hopefully the doctors will be nice they won't shoot you down and you can just keep educating your family and friends and hopefully they'll accept you and eventually when i get my diagnosis i plan to make it quite public i would like people to know i just want to spread awareness and acceptance really because it's not something to be ashamed of it's something you can embrace and yeah like you're different but that can be pretty cool so yeah thank you guys for watching if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you want to see more videos about my journey into my autistic diagnosis subscribe and comment below your personal experiences if you've got any questions please comment them below as well and you can also message me if you want on any of my social media platforms they are basically the same name as my youtube handle which is huffy tina Goodbye guys, I will see you soon and much love.